Okay, so this evening's project hopefully will take everybody's mind off what's going on at the moment and we can focus on pretty things and candles because that's what's in this box. We've got some tea lights. Um, so I've got this gorgeous little box here and I'm not going to undo that bow because look at that bow. There's no way I'll get another bow like that, is there? Especially when tied around something. I can do a bow like that normally, but not when it's round something. Way the Debs is here. So I apologise again for the delay that we've got. My Wi-Fi has absolutely fallen over, so I'm relying on good old 4G. So if you commented about 10 minutes ago and I'm only just acknowledging you, that is why. Okay, so tonight's tea light box, we're using the Feels Like Frost paper. Um, and I'm using the silver edged metallic ribbon as well to go with it. Um, and I've teamed it up with a bit of grey granite, which tonight I've slightly changed the grey I'm using. So we'll see what it looks like when it comes to bringing it together. Good evening, Liz. How are you? I hope you're well. I hope you're enjoying your prize now that it finally got there. Um, so sorry for the delay there. Lesson learnt is never trust a man to go to the post office when he says he's going because he leaves the one parcel you really wanted him to post on the side. And Debs will know who full well who I'm talking about there. Um, okay, so I'll show you the inside. So the, because that bow is awesome, you can luckily slide it off like so. And then this hinge is open and inside there is eight of these tea lights. So I'm gonna turn these on this side You'll see these are slightly deeper than normal ones because I like to use these in my wax um, burners and there's nothing more infuriating than a tea light going out after like 90 minutes. So these are six hour burners, so they're just that bit deeper, but you can fit eight of those in. I think, and I haven't quite checked the measurements, the ones that are slightly narrower, um, narrower, the ones that aren't as deep, I think you might be able to get three in this box because there's a little gap at the top once you put all eight in. There is a bit of a gap where you could potentially fit three in each of the little towers. So you could get, oh God, maths on the spot, you could get your 12 in there. Um, mine are unscented because obviously the wax burner does that. But of course you can cater your box to any colour, any scent, any season it doesn't have to be winter i just felt that now the nights are drawing in it's getting cold i like my burners on not just for the the cozy candle thing but to get a decent scent coming around the the room um so i've got some well the ones that are in at the moment smell like um you're washing because i've got a lenore smell in there but i've got some christmasy ones and wintery ones ready for when they need changing can't get my ribbon back on now. There we go. So, I'll show you how we make this one. Are they Ikea? No, they're not Ikea. They are uh, Sainsbury's. They're Sainsbury's ones. So, yeah. That's the one thing he did pick up for me, which was of use. Uh, so, I said we'd swapped out the grey. We have. We've gone with Smoky Slate this evening. So, Smoky Slate is a long-time favourite. It's been with a Stampin' Up's colour collection for a long time. So I know that this is a colour that even if you've not bought the more recent one, so Grey Granite came in in the colour refresh last year. So if it, um, if you didn't have Grey Granite, I've got Smoky Slate this evening, so we'll see how that goes. Um, so your piece of Smoky Slate is going to be six and a half inches by 11 and a quarter. Just grab my scoreboard and hope I remember where I've put my scoring tool or not we'll get the good old um, take your pick tool out then shall we um, okay so scoring on the long side so you want to start at one and three quarters four and three quarters Six and a half and nine and a half. 
and then if you turn that on to the short side we're going to score this at one and three quarters rotate it 180 and one and three quarters again like so that's all the scoring we need to do so we'll just pop this away and we'll see how this one looks in comparison so if we flip that over you can see smoky slate is just ever so slightly lighter so we'll see how well that goes with the the silver that's on the feels like frost paper i'm just going to burnish all these lines And so that is what we've got at the moment. So everything is symmetrical. There's no top or bottom at the minute. So when we cut it, that's that's where we decide. And I'm, at this stage, there is no real difference. So what we're going to do to cut this is you've got squares and rectangles along the bottom and along the top. And um, we're going to do the simple rule that I've learned from my upline and that's cut up each of the side of the squares and then notch in the square but keep the rectangle whole as a rectangle and then same here up the side of the square and notch in on both sides like so try not to throw the bits of card at yourself the other side and then what we do on this side we want to replicate on the other side so flip that round and go again hi marie how are you thank you for joining us this evening and i hope that's my laptop just being a pain and losing connection i hope you're all still seeing me a uh, quick peek. Yeah, you are. Good. Nothing worse than a technical hitch when you're live to make you panic. So, same with this one. And then these as well. In fact, cut that score line off. I missed a bit there. There we go. And last one. So what I do is, we all know I'm, I'm prone to a good little error now and again. Little boo-boo, shall we call it. So I'm going to put my paper on after I've made the box up. So I flip it over and we want adhesive on all of the squares. So I'm going to use um, my Seal Plus because it's faster. You don't have to watch me holding on to my Tombow. I'm going to put plenty on, getting as close to that inner score line as we can so that when we bring it together it's nice and nice and stuck down and there's no nasty gaps. Put that over. When my sealer wants to wear, there we go. I've been trying to, I saw somebody do a video this week on how to use this better. And I'm getting there with it, love. There we go, that's small. So at the moment, there's no top or bottom because you haven't stuck your paper on. You can stick it on first if you trust yourself to do it right. I don't trust myself to do it right. So all we're doing here is folding those tabs in and bringing the rectangle up so it meets the other edge of the next rectangle like so and then i'm going to make this the bottom you bring the middle ones in and meet them up as well like so and there's the bottom of the box and then what i do for this front is I bring bring the front over fold the tabs around both of them and then because you know that that fits now you can just pop the sides down like so 
And there you go. You've got the perfect fit there. You might want to pop, um, you can get the circle punch, so any of the circle punches and just do a little notch. Or um, what did I see somebody use the other week? The snowman builder. They use the snowman's head as the thumb hole. There we go. Right, I'm just gonna have a quick nosy at your comments because I can see you all writing. You're waiting for the bloopers. How dare you? Are you only joining for the bloopers? Some friend you are. It's just rude. Just like my laptop, because that's being rude as well and not connecting again. So I'm having to try and BDI at the screen. What's happening to my thumbnail? That's where I painted it, didn't like it, and I've been scratching it off since because I'm too lazy to get the nail varnish remover. There we go, my comments are back. Way. See, we like it when technology works. Right, so we've now got our box like this. And this is where I can show you that my candles do fit. Like so. <laughs> How dare you only join for the bloopers. <laughs> Evening, Alison. <laughs> Evening, Karen. Sorry I missed you joining. Um, good old technology is failing me this evening, so I'd trying to use my laptop for the comments and it didn't want to connect. Uh, so let's have a look. Have I missed anyone else? No, I haven't. Right, so there you can see the candles fit perfectly in. So we're gonna pop our paper on now. Just gonna take those out so it's much easier to try and do what I need to do without them in. Okay, so the paper, I've brought the stack because I wasn't sure if we were gonna go with that pattern or not, but as you can see, they've all on one side got this gorgeous silver and white in various patterns, which all you're probably seeing is a glare at the minute because of the because of the bulb that I've got above me. Um, but they're absolutely gorgeous. And then the other side are these lovely images, which every time I use the paper, I feel really bad that I'm cutting them up for the silver side. But look. I mean, you could do this box in a shade of purple, so maybe a Highland Heather and put, you know, maybe that on it instead and then team it up with one of the um, purple ribbons. There's the, there's the three shade purple ribbon that would maybe look really nice with it. Um, but I'm going to stick with the snowflake paper that I've already chosen because I'm using the snowflake when she stamps it, so it kind of, kind of all ties in. So I've gone for this pattern, so you can see lots of little snowflakes. And what you'll need is one piece that's two and three quarters by two and three quarters, and that's for the top. And then you need four pieces that are two and three quarters by one and a half. So I'm just gonna turn those over and get some seal on the back. stick myself to the paper because I always do so you'll all laugh at this but the other evening I made some cards as part of a colour challenge that I'm doing and went downstairs felt something funny on my arm and it was a piece of designer series paper that must have had a bit of glue on it got stuck to me and I'd taken it downstairs with me please Tell me I'm not the only one that's done that. Right, so there we go, that's the front. I suppose it doesn't matter which way around it goes. Let's move these out of the way. She says, sticking herself to more of them. Doesn't matter where I put the adhesive, I get stuck to it. So, one on the top there. And then one round each of the sides. I don't put any on the bottom, although, you know, that's that's up to yourself. Because of the way the ribbon goes, you might want to do the bottom if you wanted to. <laughs> like so. All the way around. I 
would normally, if I'm doing this off of camera, I would use Tombow just because I get a bit of wiggle room um, and it means that if I go wrong I can save myself a bit easier than when I use um, Snape Seal Plus. So that's what we've got so far. So what next? We're going to bring a stamp set in. So Snowflake Wishes, you'll have seen me use this oh, several weeks ago now. We did a one sheet wonder with the Snowflake Splendor and we used the Thank You Snow Much from this set. Um, also when I did the penguin cards I used this snowflake for that emboss resist background um, so I'm going to use the me or season sparkle how does the colour challenge work do you post photos in the group uh, yeah so the colour challenge I'm doing is part of my uplines group so um, part of the pootlers um, you'll see the colour challenge that's in there you just pop your photos on that post um, and everyone will do the same um, so I haven't posted mine yet I made them the other night and I've taken the photos so you've just reminded me I actually need to go and do that part um, but I'll tag you at the same time Liz and then you can see where they go um, so yes I'm using where is it me or season sparkle um, and this evening because I've swapped a smoky slate we're going to grab the smoky slate ink as well and just grab a block is that one big enough nope so smoky slate and what block have i got here i've got a h block probably a little overkill but it'll do and then i've got a piece of whisper white that's two and a half by one and a quarter. And I'm going to do the good old trick of lining it up on the grid paper in, a, in an effort to do it straight because well, I'm wonky at the best of times. So no comments, Debbie. There we go. And the good thing is, if you go wrong, a piece of card has two sides. There we go, see, never doubted myself, <laughs> do you believe me? <laughs> um, so I'm going to pop this one up on dimensionals, so I'll just grab mine, I'm only using two because I'm a bit of a tight wad, um, plus you only need two really, you can go four but I find that two does the job. And then I'm going to pop this more towards the front of the box. So make sure I find the front. Yeah, that is the front. Like so. Just making sure I've got a bit of even spacing. There we go. And then I've got my three eighths of an inch um, silver edged ribbon. And I pull a fair bit off because I like to have a bit of slack when I'm doing Okay, so as I was saying before, I was rudely cut off. I've got my ribbon and my box is upside down because the way that I tie ribbons works better upside down when it's being tied round an object. So round the object and then I'm doing one rabbit ear and my second rabbit ear. And then we cross those over and tie them through. I am back. <laughs> Um, I've got more viewers since I've come back though, so maybe I should do that more often. Um, so I flip those over and put them through like a normal bow. And then as you tie it up, um, just tighten it how you would, would like it. And I'm not liking that, so I'm doing it again. Try it the normal way, shall we? If such a thing exists. See, I've done bows backwards that long, I can't remember how to do them the right way. There we go, make those smaller.
get that twist out and we should be about there she says come on do you know this is what happens when I try to do things the normal way we'll go the other way If you find a way and it works for you, stick to it. There we go. That'll do. We've got a bow. I'm not going to make you watch me adjust that all evening. would prefer it a bit straighter it'll do for now okay so last thing we've got these gorgeous um what they're called they're called the frosted and clear epoxy droplets so i'm just going to grab a couple of these using my take your pick piercing tool i'm going to pop um a large one in the top corner and then i'm going to pop two small ones so one right next to it and one in the bottom corner like so and then see if I can tighten them, that bow, there we go, bring that loop straight shall we, that's better and there you see bows in different directions but two tea light boxes so now should be able to take that off there and I should be able to pop those tea lights in and it fits like I say it fits eight of these but could potentially fit 12 of the n normal size ones and um, I would say if there were cup ones that it'd be the same eight as these because these are a little um, deeper like the cup ones there we go and then you can pop that ribbon back on like so albeit completely wrong way around but it's on and there we are so I'm not sure which one I prefer so this one is the grey granite and this one is the smoky slate I think they both look really nice with the the paper I think smoky slate is just ever so edging it for me um so yeah i love it which one do you think grey granite smoky slate i'm still not sure i'd do, I'd do both to be fair um what am i making next week i don't know i'll be wholly honest with you i have been so snowed under with what i'm going to announce on Monday that I haven't made anything for next week yet so you you will be as surprised as I am when I make it next week um it will be 3d still I, I like making my 3d projects on these Fridays so if you do have any requests i.e the contents um I do have some green and brown chocolate downstairs is it called green no green and blacks green and black green and blacks not green and brown um I've got some green and black chocolate and um, the little mini ones so I might see if I can figure out something for for those um, for next Friday uh, is, is that time of year when we like to think about little chocolatey sweetie treats that we like to put in maybe some stockings or to our colleagues or to teachers and so on so we'll, we'll have a look that's if they survive the week because let's face it chocolate um okay so sorry that the video got interrupted and i had to split it into two it's going to be fun trying to stitch that back together so that i can upload it onto youtube but i'll get it done so as always all the products i've used this evening apart from the candles are available to purchase via myself on my shopping page on hullabaloo.com 
if you go to the navigation bar and click shop that'll take you straight online to the shop in which you can buy all these products um, don't forget take the host code off of my blog or my Facebook when you're ordering by myself um, and that means you'll be put into the little pot that gets uh, a good little freebie from myself as a thank you um, my blog will also contain how I made it and the video will be available as soon as I hit save on it following this video or tomorrow it will be on YouTube and I'll see you all again next Friday half past seven here again um, and look out for Monday and that exciting announcement I've got um, I promise you you'll like it. See you next week.